everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and we're finally here. The very end of Jurassic Park Week. Today, we have officially reviewed the new film, Jurassic Park Dominion. Now, I won't be going into any of the uh, audience or critic scores or the box office and budget numbers or any trivia and goofs because we watched it on a premiere night, so those numbers are going to be very different between the time that I upload this to the time I'm editing it to the time I'm recording it and all that jazz and whatnot. So, before I actually get into my thoughts, if you happen to enjoy this review or any other content I've put out over the last year and a half, um... Like, share, subscribe, join the madness, share it with your friends, join the Discord that's in the description box down below, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Follow us, because we're not that bad of people. I'm going to be going into the pros first of this uh, film, before I get into the cons. So the cons is a little bit shorter than the pros, so I won't be having too much to talk bad about. This is going to be a little bit, but I want to talk more good about the film than the bad. It is very story-driven. The writing and the way that the story flowed throughout the movie was actually very great. Especially when it came to the main storyline and whatnot and everything. There was a couple things here and there that kind of got like lost in the, uh, the grand scheme of things and the waves of the, the river flow of the story. But that's not really a bad thing because the main story itself was actually entertaining enough to keep you hooked onto the screen and not wanting to ever take your eyes off because it's not a boring movie. Um, new dinosaurs are in this film as well. The Dimetrodon makes its first appearance ever in, in the series. The Thenocerosaurus makes its first appearance ever. The Kets also does as well. As well as the Giganotosaurus or the Giga also is in this film. Of course you have the ones that returned from the previous films. Like, Rexy was back in the film, Blue was in the film, uh, you had your trikes, your stegosauruses, your ankylosauruses, and everything. Uh, Blue was able to reproduce on her own and uh, have her own little baby raptor child called the Beta, or Macy called the Beta and everything. Um, speaking about Macy, that was one thing that I didn't like about uh, Fallen Kingdom, not her herself, but like her story in the movie that didn't really make any sense because it was kind of just thrown in there and forgotten. In this film, they actually took that and corrected it and actually made it more a one of the main focal points of the film as to reason why they needed her, why she was a, a very important piece of the whole story and what her purpose was in the entire movie. And you get to figure out what actually happened to her Instead of this whole, oh, she's just a created clone. So, she's actually a uh, creation of herself. Her mother is basically herself, which is kind of weird if you put it that way. But they go into detail as to, like, how she, her mother did it, how it came to be, why is she uh, alive and her mother's dead, and, like, what makes her different from her mother and everything. And they did a very, 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 very good job in actually putting that into the story and explaining it so much better than they did in Fallen Kingdom instead of just going, here you go. Besides one uh, cast selection in this film, I believe that the cast, for the most part, was fantastic. Pretty much everyone was playing the parts they were supposed to play. The original trio from the original trilogy came back. They blended so well together and they actually meshed really well with the uh, newer characters. I called it in, in Fallen Kingdom and I'm happy that they went through with it and actually stuck with it. Henry Wu's slow turnaround into realizing what he has done is a grand mistake and that he wants to right his wrongs. I'm glad that they followed through with that and actually turned him into an actual like, good person in the end of the whole trilogy story. One thing that this film did that Fallen Kingdom didn't do, and especially the original Jurassic World, is that they actually mentioned uh, Sorna and the incidents there. They mentioned the Nublar incidents, even the ones before Jurassic Park, or Jurassic World, my bad. 
And they even talked about the experiments and the incident before the events of the entire series, which I also am glad that they threw that in there as well, because there hasn't really been a single... There might have been, like, little bits here and there that they kind of talked about it, but there wasn't actual screen time showing them doing experiments on the on Isla Sorna, on the island, before the storm hit. Just the fact that they mentioned all of that in the movie, I was just like, yes, they finally did it. They tied everything together so well. All the callbacks and all the... Uh, Little nods to the original uh, series and the previous two films were fantastic as well. Like with uh, Malcolm waving the flaming stick around to get the Giga off of his uh, friends and everything. And then he ended up throwing it into the Giga's mouth, making it into like a fire-breathing dinosaur, which was actually kind of cool and funny. Making it like a callback to his part when he was waving the, uh, 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 the glow stick. The, uh, the flare. The flare. <laughs> glow stick the flare to get the T-Rex off of Alan Grant and the kids back in the original film. The return of the Carnotaurus, Toast, and the Dilos. You know, the other cool dinosaurs that I wanted in this film are back in this uh, movie as well, and I was so happy that they brought back the Dilos and they were actually physically in the film, and they got screen time, and they got to do what they do best in the Jurassic Park series, and just be Dilos. <laughs> and spit on everyone. I know some people probably would have an issue with this because it was more or less not much dino action, more people action. The, the Godzilla films kind of had the same issue, but I was actually really, really satisfied with how the ending was and how everything had pretty much wove together in a nice little bow, tied up and sent off to us fans for us to watch as a great like send-off conclusion for the entire series. Those are all my pros, but again, like I said before, no film is perfect. Going into my cons, um, I'm going to kind of jump back and forth on them because I wrote them down in a weird way. The first thing I want to talk about was the subplot with the locusts. I feel like that the locusts were kind of thrown in last minute with the huge backlash on the Indoraptor in the last uh, movie in Fallen Kingdom because it kind of felt forced and it just felt kind of kind of pointless, but at the same time it also kind of worked with Macy's story and everything. It wasn't something that really got my attention or I really cared about. Like I said, the story did flow very well. It's just some things in the story that, like tiny little subplots, yeah. There are some arcs in the story that kind of get forgotten in the uh, movie. Like I totally forgot that uh, Owen was supposed to be capturing Beta for Blue and whatnot because he made a promise to a raptor. You made a promise to a dinosaur. Yeah, why? But that's just me kind of forgetting about that incidentally. Also on top of that, after they evacuated the sanctuary, where the hell was Henry Wu the entire time when the dinosaurs were coming back into the sanctuary when everyone was trying to escape and everything? Was he just hiding somewhere in a dark corner with his little suitcase like, Please don't eat me. Like, he kind of just dropped off the face of the whole movie after Beta and Macy escaped the little room. But really, other than that, it's just like, where did he go? He just disappeared. It works out in the end when it comes to his story. Kind of in a meh way, but also in a very excellent way by how they finished it off. To reiterate myself, I loved the story of this film. I loved how it was written and everything. I would have just changed a couple things to make them more relevant or more, I guess, eye-grabbing, if that makes any sense, and just flow it better together with the subplots that either I didn't care about or were forgotten about. But I still love the story. So story-wise, those are just things that I kind of nitpicking at, but... It is what it be. Besides a little, like, brief, like, uh, news report in the very beginning, and, er and everything, all the dinosaurs that escaped the, uh, fucking, uh, Lockwood estate just kind of stayed in the woods. The rest kind of just ran around and whatnot. What happened to the ones that got sold off? Yeah, they're off in the other places of the world. But that's it. I feel like it could have been done a little bit better instead of just saying, Oh, well, they got sent off. Like, kind of show some uh, screen time, like, what happened to those dinosaurs? What are they doing? Are they actually doing what they were bought for? Or are they rebelling? Or are they uh, escaping or something like that? Like, 
do something like that instead of just leaving it in like a, a news report on screen and letting some random woman, I don't know who it is, talking. The main villain. The main villain. Oh, man. I don't remember his name either. I'm just, For video's sake and to be funny, I'm just going to call him Richard Parker. He played... Uh, Peter Parker's dad in the Amazing Spider-Man films, and that's like one of the only films I actually remember him from. But he did not play a good villain at all in this movie. He was kind of worse than the other villain in Fallen Kingdom, and he's the reason that he that the locusts were created. And he was just trying to cover up his tracks and you know burn the evidence and cause all this mayhem and everything. But he just kept making things worse and worse and worse and worse, and he was just. So stupid. So, 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 so stupid. But he gets his comeuppance at the end with the di from the dialogues. All in all, I'm not saying he's a bad actor. He's probably better in other movies. It's just, he... Not a good and bad guy in a Jurassic Park movie. And my last, very, very last negative in this film is the final fight between the Giganotosaurus and Rexy, and then the part two part with Rexy the Therisinosaurus versus the Giganotosaurus. It kind of felt underwhelming. Like, it felt like they were trying to kind of rehash the fight between the Indominus and Rexy. And then it's like, oh, the Giga's like, oh shit, I'm surrounded. I need to go attack somebody. And then Rexy just headbutts it, and it gets stabbed in the throat by the Therisinosaurus. And that's it. And then Rexy just kind of goes, poof. I don't know, like, I wish the that fight was a little bit more, had more beef to it. Like, it just felt underwhelming. The film, overall, was good. Rating-wise, to me, it didn't really have the same magic and nostalgia as the first Jurassic World and at least the first two Jurassic Park movies, but it was vastly better than Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic Park 3. Like, this film uh, pretty much corrected all the wrongs that Fallen Kingdom did and it pretty much did everything in its power and succeeded in, in making sure Jurassic Park 3 is still the worst one in the series. I'm kind of sitting on a seven and a half for this film. Like, it's not... It's... I want to go back and watch it again and kind of get a, a second opinion of it for myself to kind of verify that this is actually a seven and a half, but that might take a little bit to re-verify that. But as of right now, on this recording, at the very end of Jurassic Park Week, Jurassic World Dominion gets a 7.5 out of 10. Now to finish off this series and everything, I'm going to reveal my rankings of the Jurassic Park movies and Jurassic uh, Park Week right here, right now. Number 6, Jurassic Park 3. Number 5 would be Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Number four will have to go to Jurassic World Dominion. Number three, I have to give it to Jurassic Park The Lost World, the wild Easter egg that everyone's probably going to hate me for because that's a film that not a lot of people like. That film gets a lot more hate than it should and that I believe it deserves right here in the number three spot. Number two will go to the first Jurassic World film, barely right behind the number one film, which is obviously the original Jurassic Park. So those are my rankings right there for the Jurassic Park movies during Jurassic Park week. I figured I'd squeeze in the rankings at the very end of this video so that you guys would know what are my thoughts are on that. This is Mike Check 95 and I hope you enjoyed Jurassic Park week as much as I did and I'm signing out and no more Jurassic Park movies. Kind of sad. I had some fun doing this. If only there was one more. Catch you in the next video.